Hi folks, this is Jules from Funky Jules Creations. I'm a resin artist and today I'm showing you how I brush my molds before I pour my pieces. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and come find me on Facebook and Instagram. When I brush molds, I always try to apply the darker pigments first because that allows me to clean them off the silicone later and prevents the lighter pigments that I use from looking dirty. Um, if a little bit of yellow were to get in this black pigment later, you wouldn't really see it, but if a little bit of black gets in the yellow pigment after you rubbed it in, it definitely messes up the color of the yellow. So always something to consider is you know, putting things in an order of darkest to lightest. The reason I'm turning the mold to see it at different angles right now is because if you do not brush the corners of the mold very, very thoroughly with the mica pigment, it's going to look a little bit sloppy. Um, when I pour white resin behind this, I don't want it peeking out around the edges of any of the 3D spots on the mold or around the edges of the entire piece. So you'll see me look at this piece at different angles just to make sure that I am covering every possible little spot. Now that I've finished brushing on my black mica, I'm using a little bit of alcohol on the tip of my eyeshadow brush to clean up the loose dust that's on the mold that could affect the look of the other colors. I chose to use purple next because of the pigments I'm using. That's actually the next one that's going to be fairly safe if other powder gets in there um, and can stay the right color. And this is particularly fine detail work, which means that this purple is likely to get in other parts of the mold. So I also wanted to absolutely make sure that it's not compromising my other colors later. Once again, just using alcohol on my eyeshadow brush to clean up the parts of this mold that I don't want any purple on because it did get in a few of the bare spots. These antennae um, really had a high risk of not being fully covered in the mica pigment because it's just very hard to see into those small spaces and get every little piece. So I'm exercising extra caution in applying those colors in such a way that, again, we won't accidentally see any white peeking out. I'm doing my best to keep this red from getting into the purple or the black, but because I did pour the darker colors first, it's really unlikely that those colors will be compromised even if a little bit does get in there. Um, one thing to think about at this stage is every detail in this mold is at a different level, so you always have to be making sure that you're getting the sides of the 3D molds so that you don't 
have little black or white spots sticking out on the sides from the resin you poured in. I noticed a couple of holes in the purple pigment that I colored in the body here, so I had to patch it up very carefully, but fortunately that part of the mold is so separated from everything else that I wasn't too worried about it getting into any other pigment. I find that yellow is such a light pigment that you have to be very, very careful, careful to brush it on really thick uh, to make sure that you get a good bright color on your final piece. At this stage, I'm going back over and looking for any thin spots in the mica powder that I feel might not hold as much color and just adding a little bit if it looks like it should it. Just that ensures a brighter piece in the end. Most of the holes I'm finding are on the raised edges in this 3D mold. So I'm very carefully trying to kind of brush those raised pieces because I think it would really ruin the piece if the color wasn't completely covering. At this stage in the game, if you ever do have a little bit of pigment get into a lighter color, your best bet is to just blow it off and hope it flies away because it probably has not been rubbed into that spot yet. In order to avoid bubbles forming in my pieces, I always heat the mold a bit beforehand, pour a little bit of resin in and push it around with a heat gun, and then repeat until it has been completely filled. So that's what you see me doing here, and when I'm poking around the edges, I'm just trying to make sure that any air bubbles on the edge of this piece are being released and will rise through the resin so that I don't end up with holes in the side later.
And always the best part is the time to demold. I can barely sleep waiting for these things to cure because I can't wait to see how they come out when, they come, when I pull them out of the mold. And now I can do a happy dance around my kitchen because this thing came out amazing. It's going to look fantastic in my sunset color themed butter bedroom when I get it hanging up. Thanks for sticking with me and watching my process, guys.